What's up, YouTube? Brad Hoover from Rancher Us here. All right, so should Icicle and Brainwave take on more significant roles in Season 2 of Stargirl, or do you feel like they should be more background characters and allow The Shade, Eclipso, and Solomon Grundy really to do their thing? I personally think Icicle and Brainwave's time is through. I don't really feel like we needed them for Season 2 in any form or fashion. I felt like they were starter villains that got the team off to a good running start to help them uh, understand the ropes uh, and let's move on forward to bigger and better things. I feel like uh, if there was one problem that season one had, it was there wasn't enough Solomon Grundy. Solomon Grundy is a character that a lot of people know uh, and he is a significant villain. Like this is a guy that can literally take on Superman. Uh, I mean, he can take on all these big-name heroes and live to tell the tale. So the idea that you would have him as kind of a uh, a lesser character to lesser characters, basically like Icicle, like Brainwave, I thought was kind of a ludicrous situation in the first place. Um, but I understood why they did it. They They didn't want the team to start off facing Solomon Grundy. And it don't look like they're ever going to face him as a villain. Uh, it looks like Solomon Grundy is going to be more of a protagonist in this series rather than antagonist, um, which I'm perfectly cool with. I remember the old Justice League uh, cartoon where he was kind of played that role too. Uh, you know, he was uh, he would be a good guy for a little bit and then he would be a bad guy and so forth. He was more of a great character uh, when it comes to that aspect. But as far as Icicle is concerned, I think Icicle um, needs to stay gone in a lot of ways. If not stay gone, then save him for season three when Starman is going to make a, be a significant uh, play a significant role in season three. Because I feel like Icicle taking out Starman will be you know a good combination between the two of where you know Starman can get his basically his revenge on Icicle and so forth along those lines. That would be really cool. And maybe, you know, Icicle corrupting Cameron uh, to to basically take on that mantle for him. That would be an interesting aspect for Season 3. But as far as Season 2 is concerned, I feel like you take a character like Eclipso. Eclipso is just a really amazing, scary character. It's like this weird genie that, you know, just brings out your worst fears. Uh, you know, uh, you know, he is a, you know, a supernatural entity that should take first billing in a lot of ways. And I kind of feel like they've kind of put him in the background a little bit. Of course, you know, you have, like I said, you've had the Yolanda uh, feeling bad about killing Brainwave and then Brainwave maybe appearing back to her. Uh, you know, as, as taking over her body. And then, of course, you have, uh, you know, our man going and feeding Solomon Grundy and saving him from hunters and all that story along those lines. I kind of felt like all of this, you can have side, you can have side quests, that's okay, but all of this should be leading to the overall goal of taking down Eclipso. I felt like that's that's just kind of been put in the back burner a little bit. And I feel like Shade isn't more of a villain than what he should be. I felt like, you know, we really didn't need Eclipso. Uh, you could have had Shade as a semi-villain, uh, and that would have worked perfectly good as well. But instead, they're kind of having him in a gray area where he's not a villain, he's not a hero, he's helping, he's not helping. Uh, all at the same time, we really don't know where he stands uh, when it comes to a lot of things. But I feel like that would have been a more interesting uh, villain for Season 2 than Eclipso. Uh, Eclipso saved that for when they're fine-tuned, when the, I mean, when the uh, uh, superheroes are fine-tuned, when they uh, basically go from rookies to, you know, veterans of, of, of you know, being superheroes. I felt like that would have been a lot, lot better uh, character to save for later. But now that they do have Eclipso in Season 2, I feel like he needs to be pull, pulled more towards the forefront 
Uh, and instead, it just feels like all this other stuff is just more important than finding him in a lot of ways. You know, they're just kind of sitting around waiting for him to do something instead of actively, you know, really engaging him, uh, causing him to have to engage them in a lot of ways, uh, which uh, him picking Beth as the one that he really, really goes after, I thought was a bit shocking. Uh, Beth, up to this point, season one and all the way to season two, has kind of been a really useless character in a lot of ways. Uh, season one, I kind of understood why she was there more often. The season two has just been about her and her parents' divorce, and that's been her main plot. Uh, that's a really boring plot. Um, I almost kind of wish they would kind of ease up on it a little bit, but after the way Eclipso attacked her, I attacked her on her race and attacked her on her, um, uh, you know, her parents being divorced and how she feels inside about being the most useless of all the heroes. Um, I kind of feel like instead of them pushing it back, they're going to push that forward. I didn't really understand where Eclipso was going with the whole racial thing. You know, this show has been really devoid of all of that. Um, and then all of a sudden he brings that into it and he sounds really... Uh, really kind of out of place for this kind of show uh, for saying the things that he said and for her to be uh, that to be something that was on her mind where that he would attack her over it was kind of out of place because she's never mentioned anything about you know feeling out of place among her friends or among the other superheroes because of her race or whatever she never really seemed like that was a significant issue to her like I said they've never brought it up and for Eclipso to use that as a way to attack her, I thought was just so out of left field. Uh, it didn't make sense. It didn't really work for me in that regard, simply because it was never spoken before. And so how is that one of your main fears that Eclipso can attack? Um, or your main thoughts of uh, re regrets or whatever? Um, that um, I just felt like it was out of place overall. Uh, but as far as season two goes, I think there's bigger and better superheroes for season two than Icicle. Like I said, if you want to bring Icicle for season three, where he goes up against Starman, where he, you know, he teaches his son basically to be, um, to be, uh, you know, the, the villain, uh, in the new Icicle, that would be a really cool way to present his character in season three but as far as season two needs to be more eclipso if it's not more eclipso in this then i don't know where this season two is going to go it feels right now like it's a little bit all over the place i wish that it was all these things were more connected right now they feel like just threads that are going this way and that way and they're not really um they're not really being definitive towards the main plot or working towards the main plot. Instead, they're just a bunch of subplots going in every direction and not really adding value to this story uh, in Season 2. But that's my take on it, guys. Let me know. Do y'all believe that Icicle and Brainwave should be significant characters in Season 2? Are you looking forward to them their return if they do return? Or do you feel like maybe, hey, you know what? Let's uh let's leave this season for Eclipso, the Shade, Solomon Grundy, and so forth. Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and y'all take care.